Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to continue talking about the equation solver, the algebraic equation solver in the TI-89 calculator. We're going to explore a few uh, different functions here and give you a few tips on things that may be buried in your manual. So we'll just sort of uh, go through a couple of quick examples. One thing I wanted to point out to you before we actually get back into the equation solver is if we go up here to the algebra menu, F2, uh, we've been working with solve, where you can basically solve an equation and get the real solutions. We've worked with zeros, which is the same real thing. It's just taking an equation, uh, like a polynomial, and if it, if you set it equal to zero, then you're finding the zeros of that polynomial. So you can you can find the zeros by using the solve command. We've talked about that before, but we demonstrated that, and then we went down over here into this uh, complex menu, and we demonstrated C solve, which is complex solver. So what I was basically trying to tell you before is that, you know, if you're pretty sure your equation has real roots or if you want a faster computation just to see, you can always just use the regular solver. But if you're looking for complex solutions, if complex solutions are important in your problem, uh, or if you just know that there's going to be a complex solution, then you really do need to go here into the complex menu uh, and use this complex solver because it will return all of the complex solutions and any real solutions that are there. The only downside to using this all the time is it just takes a little bit longer to calculate the solution. So, um, you know, unless you're really pressed for time, you can just use this all the time. Now, one thing I did want to show you is, because uh, a lot of you guys are going to use the zeros function. Uh, we talked about this a minute ago. If we put an equation in there, you know, x squared plus 5x minus 4, that's a polynomial, and we're going to get, have it uh, calculate the zeros of this polynomial. All that's going to happen is it's going to set this polynomial equal to zero, which is what you're doing when you, f you find the zeros. You're finding where it crosses the x-axis, and it's going to apply that solver algorithm to it to try to come up with with solutions. So in this case, it's going to to be able to succeed. Uh, we're going to get get a um, uh, two real solutions back. Uh, if we change this a little bit. Let's make it x squared, uh, just for kicks, minus x. Let's take out the 5 here. And let's make it minus 5, like that. And we're going to solve for the zeros of this guy in terms of x. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and we're going to get, it's going to go ahead and calculate that. So we're getting two zeros because it's a second order polynomial. Now it's got it all in terms of square roots because it's keeping everything exact. But if I go here to the green button and here the squig, hit the squiggly line, um, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, the two solutions there. Okay, so for both of these two examples, it's a second order polynomial, and I'm basically getting real answers for both of them, two real answers. Now let's let's try something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and put something in here that I know is not going to have a real answer. Let's say x squared plus five, because when you think about it, if you take this polynomial and you move five to the other side of the equal sign, you know, you got to imagine an equal zero, then you'll have x squared is equal to negative five, and if you take the square root, you're going to get imaginary numbers. If you stick this in, this polynomial, which is a regular looking polynomial, into the zeros formula and hit enter, you're going to get a bracket with nothing in it, because it's really implied here that unless there is a C in front of the function for complex, these these functions, the zeros function and the solve function, they're only going to return real solutions. And we know from just doing a little algebra in our head that since you have a negative 5 over there and you try to take a square root, you're going to get a complex uh, answer. So this zeros function is going to return nothing. So I'm just telling you that if you're in the business of using the solver and also the zeros function, and one of these days eventually you're going to put a polynomial in there that's not going to have all real answers, or maybe no real answers like this one, and you're going to get this um, empty set here basically and you're going to look at it and you're going to wonder what's going on. Um, well if it happens you need to realize it's just because there's no complex solution. So if this ever happens to you, much like the solver, there's a C solve. Let's go over here to complex, there's a C solve. Well there's also a complex zero function. Complex zero function. So if we stick the same thing in here, x squared uh, plus 5 comma x, close those parentheses up, hit enter, and then we're going to see that uh, we're going to get exactly what we were hoping for. We're going to get the complex answer. So I'm just doing it mostly for completeness. Um, the functions up here are going to return the real um, 
the real answers. And if you're trying to find complex numbers or complex answers or complex solutions, which most of the time, especially in advanced math, you're, you will care if they're complex, then you're going to have to come down and use these other guys here. And you'll notice there's a complex factor also that we're going to end up using later. But for now, we're talking about the solver and the zeros. All right, let me escape out of that. Next, I want to discuss with you, looking through this menu, we're going to cover it all, but the next most relevant thing to what we've been talking about so far is this function down here, insolve. Um, insolve. So it's not C solve, it's insolve. In means numeric, numeric solver. Basically, when you think about it, this function up here, this solve function, is a good all around function. It works just fine for 99.9% .9 of the cases. If you need complex answers, you can go to C-Solve and it'll return those. But if you have a really complicated polynomial, maybe you have a 10th order polynomial or a 15th order polynomial, really, really complicated, then it could take the solver a long time to figure out what to do because it's going to actually, you see it's really doing the algebra here um, to get the answers. That's why your, your square roots are so pretty and everything because it's actually doing the algebraic manipulation keeping everything exact. But if you have a tenth order polynomial or something then it's going to take this solve function a long time maybe longer than you have on your test so you really don't want to sit around and wait for it. But in that case TI has provided the numeric solver which is um, not really using algebra so to speak to manipulate and solve it's using an algorithm to, to sort of um, uh, pick it, you pick a starting point and I'll show you how you do it in a second and then the algorithm sort of searches around your starting point for something that seems to to look like the solution so in order to to show you what I mean I think it's easier let me go and escape out of this let me go ahead and get rid of this and this one down here so we did the zeros of this polynomial x squared minus x minus 5 and we got all this stuff here which was exact we did the took the um, exact answer and converted it to a decimal and we got these answers right here now it's perfectly fine it didn't take too long for the calculator to do this but let's say again it was a tenth order polynomial how would you you know how would you save a little bit of time um, well we can go up here and we can go to in solve so let me go down to number eight and hit enter and put in solve on the stack and let me go ahead and put the same exact equation in there because that's what we're doing uh, minus x minus five and this is in solve this is a solver so um, you know we need to put equal zero here and then we'll put comma x and to make this totally clear since I'm, I've been doing the zeros up here like I said, these two functions are really almost interchangeable, but let me just make it absolutely clear. Let me backspace over the n. So now I'm using just the regular solve function. To solve this equation, uh, x squared minus x minus 5 is equal to 0. It's the same thing as this zeros function. Uh, and when you hit enter, you're going to get the same answers. And it tells you those answers right there. And when you hit the green button, then you're going to be getting the same thing. So these two numbers here, they're exactly the same thing that the uh, zeros function gave us. It's just a different way to solve the problem. But I'm going to go ahead and do it this way because here in a second I want to go in the F2 menu and I want to go down to number 8. I'm just going to click number 8. I'm going to put in solve on the stack and I'm going to put x squared uh, minus x minus 5 uh, is got to equal to 0 and I'm going to put comma x. I'm not going to do anything different. I'm going to type it in exactly the way it appears, except it's in solve rather than solve. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to think for a second. And it's only going to return one solution. It only returned one of the two solutions. So if you accidentally come down and hit in solve without knowing what you're doing, you're going to be really confused because you know that there should be two solutions to this guy, um, but you only get one of them. So what's the deal? In solve is a numeric solver. It's If you don't put any... Um, any con any argument here, and I'll show you. It's really called a seed. A guess is really really what the, the deal is. If you just put it in like normal, it's going to basically pick a starting point, and it's going to begin to search around, um, kind of going back and forth, looking for. It, basically, what it's going to do is continue to plug in numbers into this function here, into this polynomial, and it's going to continue plugging in numbers and evaluating this polynomial over and over and over again until the left-hand side gets really, really close to zero. And when the left-hand side gets really, really close to zero, that value of x is the answer. 
So it's a completely different way of solving than up here. Up here, it's actually you know factoring and doing FOIL and trying to do algebra to find these answers here. Down here, it's purely a numeric thing. It's it may plug in a thousand different values of x until finally it gets close to zero. Um, so if you don't specify a guess or a starting point, it's just going to pick one and it's going to pick this guy. Now if I come over here, the way you really are supposed to use nsolve, instead of put comma x, you put x is equal to, uh, let's say, uh, you know, minus 2. Now if you put an argument here, nsolve, equation to solve, and then x is equal to a number, this is what I'm calling your guess. This is the point the calculator is going to begin to start guessing. So it's going to plug x is equal to negative 2 into here. It's going to get a value. It's not going to be 0, but it'll start to search. It'll start to pick other values around and plug them in and see what they equal. And it's basically going to chase it around until it evaluates so close to 0 that it says, OK, we're there, and it's going to present the answer. So when I hit Enter, it just takes a second, and I'm going to get the answer I expect because my guess, x is equal to minus 2, is pretty close to this particular root up here. All right, if I change my guess to x is equal to let's say positive 1, then I'm going to be, let me go ahead and just make it positive 2. I'm going to guess sort of close to what the solution is up here, then I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to get the 2.79 answer. So sort of what I'm trying to tell you here is the end solver is really only used to get one answer at a time. If you don't put any argument here, just put x here, it's going to pick its own starting point and provide one solution to you. If you start putting in guesses, then it's going to find the nearest solution. Here we have already found both of them, so we have already have, have the thing. If we go in here and accidentally put you know, x is equal to 10 as our guess and hit enter, it's going to return the same answer because it started at 10, it's going to work its way down until it finds the answer. Now you might ask, why would you ever use in solve all this trouble of guessing and all that stuff? when I can go all the way back up here and use the regular solver and get both answers in one uh, in one time and the answer is you're you're absolutely correct you're not going to use in solve very often at all I'm just covering it in this tutorial for completeness so you know what your calculator can do I would have a hard time believing that you would use this very much the only time that you would ever consider using in solve is if you're writing a program for this calculator maybe you have a reason that you want to find a specific root a specific solution uh, or maybe uh, like I said you might have a tenth degree polynomial and if you just go and do the regular solver it might take 10 minutes for this thing to find all 10 answers and then you're going to clutter your display with 10 answers maybe you only want to find the answer you know far, you know around x is equal to 100 or something and then you can just put that in there and it'll find the one closest to that now let me show you one more thing before we basically in the section I can keep putting guesses in here no problem but if I take this guess out and leave it like that uh, then if I just hit enter it's going to pick the starting point it's going to return this solution up here just like it did before but if I put in solve like that and then I put this pipe command which in your mind when you press this button you should re you know replace it with the word uh, with or using the following substitution then I can do something like X and I can go into the math menu and into the test menu 8 and hit this greater sign button enter so I can do X is greater than 0 what this is telling in solve is go ahead and solve this equation for X and I want you to find the first solution that you find greater than 0 so let's say you don't know what you know a good guess would be but all you care about is that you want one of those solutions when X is greater than 0 and you hit enter and it's going to provide the solution we expect, the 2.79 solution. But remember, this could be a 10th degree polynomial. You have 10 answers, so it's going to find the first one it comes across. If you come in here and change this constraint, you know, backspace over it, go back in the math menu, uh, go to the test menu number 8, and let's say you, you hit less than. X is less than, let's say instead of less than 0, let's change it just to make it uh, uh, interesting. X is less than negative 1 then it's going to start at negative one and only look for the first solution that it finds off to the left of that so when you hit enter it's going to find the answer that we expect because that's the only other solution of this equation so I think that about wraps it up you're not going to use insol very much you might use it if you program this calculator um, it's a useful function it's just not something that you're going to be on your algebra test probably using too much unless you have very large polynomials 
to wrap it up on the solver stuff uh, the solver up here only returns real solutions the zeros function here only returns real solutions uh, when you go over here to the complex menu if you use C solve complex solve you'll get real and imaginary solutions and if you use C zeros you will get real and imaginary solutions as well if you don't want to solve the thing algebraically um, and just want to do a numeric solution starting at a guess or looking at a region in X that you can specify with greater than less than then you can use in solve basically it's a faster solution technique when um, when the equation gets very ugly uh, it'll be much much faster doing it that way than trying to do it with a regular solver if your equation is really complicated I'm Jason I hope you've learned something in this section it's a uh, um, very very cool and useful features of this calculator. It just takes a while to understand what's going on. I hope that these examples have enlightened you and helped you out there, give you a little more confidence using these features in the TI-89 calculator.